racing. For many, it's about speed. For others, it's about the competition. Some see it as the ultimate coordination between man and machine. But whatever the motivation, car racing continues to fascinate our culture. It has since the invention of the first vehicle. For Nathan Block, who is from Beechburg, a small town just outside the city of Pembroke, cars were a part of his life from a very young age, although his first love was for trains. Nathan's interest soon migrated to racing cars. Whenever I was about four years old, I went to a race in Wasport with my mom and dad, and I've been hooked on racing ever since. At the age of five, my parents bought me a used go-kart for Christmas, and uh, the following spring, the day after my sixth birthday, I did my first race at the National Capital Karting Club of Ottawa. Um, in fact, I won my first race that season as well. Always the smallest and youngest on the track, he beat all the odds. For the next eight years, Nathan continued to set records at go-kart tracks from Ottawa to Toronto to Montreal. It was all of a sudden there was a, a uh, you know, there was outside sources saying, okay, look, at this is, you, this kid's got to go somewhere. This is, you're wasting your time. And by the time the third professional had told us that, it was like, okay, we've got to maybe start paying attention here. Moving forward to 2011, the 17-year-old Nathan Block is competing in the Formula Tour 1600 Championship. This series, which is based out of Quebec, is composed of 12 races set over five tracks. Some of the greatest drivers in the world got their start in this Formula Ford class of motorsport. Nigel Mansell, Ayrton Senna, and Michael Schumacher all made their marks in wingless open-wheel cars like these. Today, Nathan and his dad arrive at the racetrack in Shannonville, Ontario. It is a much-needed practice day. Nathan is currently leading the Formula Tour 1600 driver standings by four points after four races. Everything basically has gone perfect so far this year. Uh, and I, I got selected as one of the three finalists for, for Team Canada. So I, I, I have very little, if anything, to complain about this season. So what we're going to do different this weekend? Yes. But Nathan hasn't been behind the wheel of his number five Van Diemen much recently. Seat time is integral to a racer, and this day at Shannonville should help Nathan leading up to the next series races at Circuit Mont Tremblant. He'd been out of the car for a couple of weeks, so what we do with that test is, although it's not even a track he's going to race on during the year, we look at the data and we check to see his progress during the day, and we're just trying to bring him back in the focus. But the practice day at Shannonville was not only about the driver. The crew had made some changes to Nathan's car, and this day gave the team a chance to see how the car was performing. They were shaking down uh, some new equipment. They put a new engine in the car, uh, getting him ready, and they wanted to be sure that everything was right. Um, and there was some concerns about some of the stuff, and it turns out that they were well-founded. They, they had a seal leaking and uh, some problems at the back, so they had to split the car. So consequently, it was he didn't get a lot of track time that day. Uh, the track time he did get um, proved that, you know, that he can adapt because he had never been to Shannonville. And by the end of the day, he had the fastest lap in the track. But despite Nathan's skill as a driver, taking part in a racing series at this level poses its share of challenges. And one of the biggest of these is financial. For Nathan to be able to compete in the entire Formula Tour 1600 season, the blocks came to realize that they would need to bring in sponsorship dollars. The six weekend 12 race season would cost approximately $80,000. Not a small chunk of change. Leading into this year, finding sponsors was a top priority. This year we have 21 sponsors. There's, uh, our biggest ones are Boston Pizza and Mr. Lube. They've been vital in seeing a full season. We didn't have a full season until they came on board. Uh, we still didn't raise all the money that we were looking for in the first place. We, we had enough to do the season, but no crash damage. Um, now that he's had a couple of crash da crashes, <laughs> the budget's getting really thin, <laughs> but it's always a challenge. One of the biggest expenses for a driver is the costs associated with getting the car on the track. This is where the racing team comes in. From preparing each driver for race day to making necessary repairs to each vehicle, the racing crew is an integral part of any victory and getting the right crew can make all the difference between simply finishing a race and taking home a tour championship. Nathan's team, Britain West Motorsports, has been with him all season. 
Former Formula Ford racer David Clubine is the team principal with Britain West and is passing on his knowledge to a new generation of racers. He has been around racing all of his life and knows what is needed to help a team succeed in a challenging environment. It's very busy. Um, we, we have one mechanic per car, uh, an engineer, uh, an engine guy, and, and myself. And uh, it's, it's pretty hectic during the day, especially if you have a little bit of adversity, like a, a crash, for instance, or something like that. Um, but the, the guys are all very experienced, so they know how to deal with it. When it comes to experience, there are few on the Britain West team with more knowledge in racing than Phil Matthews. While not working for Bombardier Aerospace, Phil works for Britain West as team engineer. Phil develops the final setup and works with the drivers to get the most out of their car. And this includes developing the game plan for each race. From an engineering point of view, I work with Nathan to put aside the adversity, to put aside any stumbling blocks that we come across. Okay, we now that we understand them, we talk about them, we break them down and we say, okay, this is what happened. So that everybody, it's all clean, it's all on the table. And then after that, we put that aside and we move on to the next race. The newest team member of Britain West Motorsports team is Mark Warren. He too grew up in auto racing and has international formula car experience. Mark oversees the final track preparation and keeps the wheels rolling on hectic race weekends. Uh, basically, I'm just one of the other mechanics that's on the team. Um, there's not really a whole lot of us, so uh, it's always a pretty big workload. During the race weekends, my specific job is to work with Nathan and uh, make sure his car is okay and communicate with him any issues that are with the car or how he can improve uh, on his driving. Throughout the season, Nathan has become more and more confident with his team. During the Shannonville practice day, they needed to literally tear the car in half to make some much needed repairs. Less than 30 minutes later, Nathan was out on the track, hitting speeds of over 200 kilometers per hour. I think that um, Dave Klubine and Brenton West Motorsports, I think that they're definitely easily the number one team in the paddock. After a productive practice day at Shannonville, Nathan and his dad head back to Pembroke. But with a week before race weekend, Nathan still has a lot to do. A high school student from Fellows High School, racing is not the only thing on Nathan's mind. It is near the end of the school year, and for every high school student, that means exams. The hallways quickly fill up with students as Nathan gets to his seat for his first class of the day, English. Today, Nathan's English teacher, Liam Trim, reviews the many topics that the class covered throughout the semester in preparation for next week's exam. See. And so what we can do then now is we can just uh, do a little bit of a, a review of uh, Macbeth because that's pretty much all that's uh, left of the semester that we need to look at. Uh, he's an excellent student. Even given you know, his, his responsibilities outside of class, he works at a part-time job, he's racing, he's traveling all over the place. And with all this, with, in doing all of this, he's still able to, uh, to achieve uh, very well academically. So it's, it's very impressive. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's got a lot of irons in the fire. When he started racing in the early days, um, the go-karting gave us extreme leverage on schoolwork. Uh, he always read the Riot Act very early on that this, you know, schoolwork will not suffer because of go-karting or racing, period. So you get this right because there will be no mercy. Your marks fall, you don't race till they come back. That applies right till today. But keeping up with his schoolwork with such a busy schedule has yet to become a problem for Nathan. He remains an honor student and is respected by both his teachers and his peers. After Nathan's day at school is done, he heads out to yet another one of his many commitments. Everybody understands? Nathan is a black belt and has been doing karate for over a decade. This evening, Nathan is helping his sensei with a class grading. The purpose of the session is to help these students move up the ranks in the martial art. Chris Murden is the class's sensei. Originally from England, Chris moved to Canada and by 1997 began teaching martial arts. Nathan has been with Chris almost as long. Reku. Sichi. Hachi. Kyu. Ju. He is consistent, you know, he keeps at things and he, he plugs away at them and he keeps going until he, he gets it. And uh, that's, that's one of the, the great things about Nathan, he never quits. It is Nathan's dedication and discipline that allows him to succeed at so many pursuits. But it will be his skill and determination that will be tested in four days at Circuit Mont-Tremblant. It is the Friday of race weekend and the Britain West team arrives at the track early. 
Each mechanic meticulously goes over each car to make sure it is ready to race. This morning, Dave makes some final adjustments for Nathan before he goes out for practice. After the final touches are made, Nathan heads out to test the car and get a feel for the track. At the end of the day's practice sessions, Nathan drives into the pit and talks to Mark and the team about how the car performed. He then pulls out of the pit area to bring the car back to the paddock. The crew will make their final adjustments before the end of the day. All must be in order because racing starts first thing tomorrow morning. That evening at the Block's hotel room, Nathan and his parents talk about his car and the day's practice runs. So your last session, you're happy with the car? Yeah. It was the, sec the second last session there, Nathan, where well, you had a lot of trouble. Mm, yeah. It, it, it was, the car was down on power and didn't handle right or anything. Did they change the springs back? At nope. No. Nope. Because you know, so. they were talking about changing them, eh? They were toying with the idea of do it or not do it. And so, um, we, like, we decided not to. So we, we left it that way, and he said that he'll, he thinks it's better, and I think it's better, too. The excitement of a race weekend can be a lot for a driver. Quiet evenings like this one help Nathan wind down before race day. For Nathan, family is very important, and talking about the race to come with Steve and Sandra is his favorite way to prep the night before. My mom is a very supportive and, and, uh, and loving person. We've sort of looked at things a different, a different for the better after she was unfortunately diagnosed with MS. Um, but she's very strong to be able to keep doing what she's doing, like with her day job and uh, being able to support me with racing. My dad is definitely equally as supportive. He um, spent many hours late at night in the karting days, um, always getting the kart ready for the next race. I wouldn't have been able to kart without his help, and I wouldn't be racing today without his help. I love him very much. I, I thank them for all the work they've done. I'm glad to make, to make them proud. Tomorrow is an important day for Nathan. He sits first in the championship standings thus far, but needs a good performance to keep it that way. As the sun sets on another day, the Block family settles in for the night. It is finally race day. In the shadow of the ski hill at Mont Tremblant, race teams make the necessary preparations in their respective paddocks. Golf carts speed to and fro, carrying people and information before the cars hit the track. Even at 8 a.m., the track at Circuit Mont Tremblant is a beehive of activity. Back at Britain West, Nathan is preparing for his last practice run before qualification. The two races Nathan will take part in here at Mont Tremblant are scheduled for 30 minutes or 15 laps, whichever comes first. That's a short amount of time, allowing little room to recover from errors. He needs to be ready. And sometimes getting ready at this point is as easy as just relaxing and calming one's nerves. Just before he heads out onto the track, Nathan and Phil discuss a little strategy for the practice run. Before Nathan can get out onto the track, he needs to get suited up. His gear consists of racing shoes, full body racing suit, and his helmet. Once he is prepped, he heads to his vehicle. With the help of his dad, Nathan gets into the car and checks his setup. With both car and driver ready to go, Nathan heads out onto the track for the last practice run. For Nathan, this last run with the car before qualification will give him a chance to make sure the car is running its best. It will also let him implement any new strategy before the times start to count. Back in the pits, Nathan's parents and crew wait patiently for him to drive by. Each lap takes around two minutes to complete. For a mom and dad, a change to this schedule can be worrisome. Well, it's can be a little stressful now and again. We're, I think we're way past the, the nervous stage. Um, typically, it's, uh, it doesn't bother me that much. Usually, we keep an eye on the times. If he's, if he's overdue, it's sort of like, OK, how much overdue? Uh, and there's a, there's a bit of a window for a minor incident that, that is like, OK, you had a minor incident. But when it gets beyond that, it's sort of like, OK, <laughs> now it's starting to get you know, concern time. But, but typically, it's, uh, it doesn't bother me that much. But shortly into the practice, tragedy strikes. Within moments, the pit crew gets word over the radio of what happened. Nathan hit Yee. Nathan hit Yee.
When the flatbed arrives in the pit area with Nathan's car in tow, the crew gets a quick glimpse of what kind of damage had been done. The team makes their way back to the paddock to further assess the situation and begin work on the car. The tow truck crew works quickly to get both Nathan's and Guy's cars off the flatbed and back into the possession of the Britain West team. Time is of the essence and the team must work quickly to figure out if the cars are repairable in time for qualification. But the Block family's first concerns are not for the car, but for their son. You're not hurt? That's the main thing. We're good to go. Uh, now we're one race short. Okay, don't worry about it. I am. We got it covered. Let's get this baby back together first. Go get some water in you, okay? With the damaged cars back in the paddock, the crew quickly realizes the extent of the crash. For the Britain West team, this crash couldn't have come at a worse time. With qualification less than an hour and a half away, the team would need to buckle down if Nathan was to make qualification. We pushed right till the very end. We had him dressed ready to go in the car so that if it came down off the stands that he was going to be ready to go. We only needed one lap um, to get him out for one lap would have done the trick and it turns out that that didn't happen. If I was thinking anything, I was thinking, this sucks. <laughs> like, I should be 25 cars higher at, at best, right? But it was just a real awkward feeling. I need to be up there, and I'm back here, so just plug at it. As I said earlier, when life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. With a starting position of 31st amongst 31 cars, he certainly has his work cut out for him. Despite his predicament, Nathan's attitude remained positive, and things started to go his way shortly before the race was to start thanks to an unexpected offer from one of the master's drivers. I'm going to let you pass before number one. Okay, they drop the flag. Just pass me the I'm about second or third before last. Okay, so I'll let you pass there. You should pass me on, the, on my right, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, so I'll stay there. Okay. Stay left, yeah. Stay left, and then yeah. you pass me. Right. Thank okay. you very much. All right. just one piece. Thanks to some good sportsmanship from more than just one of the Masters drivers, Nathan may still be able to finish strong in the race. Nathan hops in the car and heads toward the start. Soon, the cars make their way under the track for the first go-round. The race will begin when the cars get back around to the pit area after this first lap. Quickly, the cars begin to bunch up. As the cars round the final corner, they begin to speed to the starting line. And with that, the chase is on. Before the end of the first corner, a few of the Masters racers already let Nathan by just as promised. Less than halfway through the first lap, Nathan had already made a huge leap, gaining 12 positions. By the time he had completed the first lap, Nathan had climbed all the way from 31st to 13th. Nathan continued his quick ascent right at the beginning of the second lap, making an aggressive move on the inside at turn one. Nathan was making up ground, but the leaders at the front of the pack had a 50-second lead thanks to his poor starting position. For the next four laps, Block continued to make his way through some heavy traffic, but each driver he came upon soon found themselves looking at the back of his tailpipe. For his dad, who was watching in the pits, the excitement began to grow. So your question was, can you go 31st to 1st? <laughs> By the end of lap six, Nathan had made a miraculous climb to fourth position. It was shortly after this that a competitor had his car stall on him, just before turn 12, right under the bridge. The driver tried to start the car a few times to no avail. When a race marshal noticed flames coming out of the back of his car, the racer leapt from the vehicle and made room for the marshal to put out the fire. His race was over. The fire had put the race into a full course caution, preventing any further passing. Unfortunately for Nathan Block, by the time the car had been removed from the track, the race was over. 
Nathan passed the checkered flag, finishing in fourth position, a fantastic end to a challenging race. I was happy for coming from the back, but I was shocked more than anything else that I was able to, to make so much headway in such a short period of time. Thank you so much. After the race, the cars made their way to the weighing station to see if they were within the minimum weight requirements. Cars that were not would be disqualified. Nathan showed the true level of his excitement after an adrenaline pumping come from behind race. Complete jubilation. <laughs> it was, you know, I was pretty proud of him to, to accomplish that, especially with a sponsor there. That was, that was quite an accomplishment. After more than a few celebratory hugs, Nathan talked with some of his competitors about the key moments of the race from each of their perspectives. Despite racing against one another on the track, many racers see themselves as belonging to a unique club. Not many have the ability to race, and even fewer have the means or the ambition. These men and women are a unique breed. After a strong showing on Saturday, Nathan looks to follow up his fourth place finish with a better showing Sunday. Now he only has a one point lead in the championship standings over the second place driver Olivier Bonnet. He must be his best today if he is to leave Mont Tremblant still in first. This race morning starts out as many race days do. The crew makes some last second changes to each car. Drivers get some advice from their engineers. But today, Nathan gets a special visit from one of the series veteran drivers. Didier Schreinen stopped by to chat with Nathan and his team. You're coming flat out at the end of the straightaway, 220, okay? Yep. Yep. Boom. Most negative. <laughs> and then a little tap, even just to put the nose down. <laughs> you got the position. This is Didier's 24th season in racing. He has seen a lot of young Phenom drivers, but he recognizes that there is something special about Nathan. Nathan is a kid that is really impressive because I've raced against uh, a lot of those kids coming up from the uh, karting ranks and uh, trying to make a career out of this. And uh, Nathan is uh, probably one of the smartest one, not only fast, but knows what's going on on the racetrack. He's a very smart kid, and on top of that, he's fast. After Didier heads back to his own paddock, Nathan prepares to make his way to the track for today's qualifying. This qualifying session becomes very important if Nathan wants to avoid starting further back in the pack again. Mark and Steve help get the car out of the tent and again Nathan heads to the track. Down in the pits, Mark Warren waits for the qualification to start. During a race, Mark can communicate with Nathan anytime via two-way radio. This communication is priceless to a driver and can make all the difference in the outcome of a race. As the cars make their way onto the track for the qualification, Mark heads to the pit wall and begins to talk to his driver. Almost immediately, Nathan begins to notice a problem with the car. Okay, I copy that. Just, just keep an eye on it. Yeah, there might be a, maybe a bubble in the system. Okay, just bring her in the pits. His his car is running a his car is running a 215. Who? Nathan. 215. He said it would go up to 215 and down to 190. He says it's going all over the place. As the race goes on to a red flag, Mark seizes the opportunity to get Nathan into the pits. When Nathan arrives, it doesn't take long for the team to figure out the problem. A cylinder head gasket blew. Nathan would be unable to return in this qualifying session. By the looks of things, he would be qualifying under the one lap he did have a chance to finish. But with heavy traffic and car troubles, this slow lap would start him way back in 24th position for the race. Nathan would once again be looking to come from the back of the pack. Okay, I'll see you down there. Nathan talks about the strategy that he has used since he was racing go-karts. Think two turns ahead. That's been my strategy for quite a while, like in karting and now in racing cars, I always think two corners ahead. I've won races that way and I've, I've lost races that way too, so I've, I've learned that over the, over the years. And this strategy would reap benefits early in the second race as he passed seven cars on the first lap. But with the field breaking away into smaller groups, that made progress difficult. 
Locke continued to make steady gains until his engine began to lose power at high RPMs. A full course caution on lap 10 allowed Nathan to close up the gap. After gaining one more position, a driver spun out in front of Block, forcing him onto the grass to avoid a collision. Unfortunately, this incident allowed two cars to get past, dropping Nathan to ninth. With only a few laps to go, the same section of track that saw the car fire during race one claimed another victim. Seconds after the turn 11 crash, the pit hears about who was involved. What happened here? Garrett's, Garrett's in the wall hard. Garrett's in the wall hard on the wall. With Garrett's condition still unknown, emergency crews are quickly dispatched. The race goes under a red flag and all drivers head into the pit. As soon as Nathan's car stops, he jumps up to tell the crew what he saw. Garrett's upside down. He's up, yeah, he's upside down in the fastest turn of the track. Oh. I don't know. Get your foot off. With everyone in the pits concerned for Garrett, back at the crash site, emergency crews turn the young racer's car over. Although Garrett is moving fine and seems to be okay, paramedics are taking no chances. They quickly get Garrett onto a stretcher and into an ambulance. At the same time, another Britain West team car is getting towed from the track. The Block family gets together in the pits for a family hug. Sometimes moments like these remind us all what is really important. The, uh, yeah, one of the Benets uh, came in and they said he's walking, so he's, he's okay. Yeah. With race two ending shortly after the crash, Nathan moved up one more position to finish eighth. Not the outcome he had hoped for, but the young racer certainly showed resilience over a hot and humid weekend. After Circuit Mont-Tremblant's summer classic races, Nathan Block still leads the Formula 1600 Tour. With only six races left in the season, Block seems like he is well on his way to winning the Tour Championship. Racing is about more than speed. It is about dedication. It is about hard work. It is about pushing yourself and your machine to the limit and coming out on the other side. For those around Nathan Block, it doesn't take much to get them talking about the young racer. They seem convinced that he has what it takes to take the next step. Yeah, he's been doing really good, consistent, and he's always uh, been running up front. His willingness to work and to learn and to find different ways to do things is more than enough for him to exceed it at whatever level his financial backing can take him. Uh, I hope when Nathan wins the championship and uh, I hope he moves on and makes lots of money in racing. <laughs> I hope to, to see him in Formula 2000 next year, um, and I think he'll do very well if he does. For Nathan Block, racing is his passion. It is his dream. And it seems unanimous that the sky is the limit for this young racer.